everyone, and welcome to another episode of Flip on the Cryptocraft server. Yes, as you can see, as the game realizes where I am, I have made it to the top of the Dark Tower that was on fire, and of course it is still on fire. But uh, I have some very interesting things that I've found. For example, this room at the very top of the central flaming tower... I'm not sure what it, this is. Work in progress, R-E. What is that? There's apparently a point to filling this in with redstone ore blocks, I think. Uh... Let's check it out and see if anything, like, blows up or something. No, no, no indeed. But this is a very interesting block, whatever it is. And I think we should get it. Work in progress, RC. Which, of course, can be found with this. Carmini Reactor. Carmini Reactor. I don't know. Apparently, its intended purpose is to be surrounded on all sides. Whoa! There wasn't a creeper here before. Its intended purpose appeared to be... Yeah, let's get rid of him. Hmm. Curious. Anyway, seems to be... The point of it is to be filled with redstone ore. Weird. And then there's this recipe. Four borer essence. Four redstone and a gas tier. I'm guessing that this means... Something's gonna be craftable that way in the future? I, I can't really tell, but I don't have... Well, I suppose, oops, the easiest way to figure out if that's true and to see if it works right now would be to, uh, oh, come here, come here, lovely item frames. Let's take them all off the wall and configure the exact same crafting recipe that we saw there here on this conveniently placed crafting bench, which is apparently the intended purpose for it being here in the first place. Now, this was probably something to do with tower wood, but... Whatever this nether stuff is, probably, you know, removed it all. Okay, so, it was four borer essence, a single gas tier, and then four redstone. I guess it has not yet been implemented, but apparently that is something in the future, or will be something in the future, along with whatever the carmine reactor is, which is, of course, found at the top of this tower. Uh, one of the main discoveries that I want to show you guys is that up here, uh, there's these balcony areas. In the center, you see this, uh, this redstone thing? That is where I found this block, the ghast trap. Um, very strange. This, this block, well, I just found the carmine reactor now, I had no idea that was there. The gas trap is apparently intended to be fueled by redstone. What does it do? I don't know because it doesn't appear to be doing anything right now. I'm guessing it has something to do with nearby ghasts. So maybe I'll bring it in the nether for some testing. If nothing happens with that, I just won't include it on screen. More importantly, the reappearing blocks, the ones found in the balconies, were mineable with my chainsaw. And they will actually disappear and then reappear in time. Even more wonderful than that, watch this, guys. Say I have a whole bunch of them together. Uh, like this, okay? Let's let that one come back. And I give them a redstone pulse. Poof, they all go. And you can walk through these, and they'll come back. This is possibly the coolest block in the game. And the fact that you can straight up mine it with your chainsaw, and get the block back, is just amazing. I'm going to bring these to my base and make, like, underwater doors or other... Amazing things with this. this. This has to be my favorite block yet that I found. But I don't know what the gas trap does, and I don't know what the Carmine reactor does. Uh, they seem kind of scary, but uh, be that as it may, don't leave the engine on, Fwip. <laughs> oh, anyway, there's one last thing I want to check. As I was re-watching the strange... F oh, there it is. Another Carmine reactor. Oops, that shouldn't be there. What I meant to do was just, like, right-click it with an empty hand and see if that did anything. 
Because this apparently... I don't know what that is. Maybe that'll be like a craftable recipe for a nether star, but that would be overpowered. And apparently there's something to do with tower wood, I'm guessing. Hmm. No, I can't click it. Nothing. And if it's covered in the redstone ore blocks, as it is meant to be, I really don't see there being any change. You know? Like, it's interesting that it's set up this way, you know? It really does suggest that whatever this Carmine reactor is, it is meant to be encased in a structure that looks just like this. Now, because it's not doing anything, unless it needs a block update on all sides, except for the bottom, no, no, it's not doing anything. It probably hasn't been implemented yet, but uh, maybe that will be another thing in the future with Twilight Forest. Now, here's the other thing. These tower builder blocks. What do they do when they're given a constant redstone signal? Oh my god, they're doing something. No, oh, me and my falling down. Look at that. What are they doing? Are these supposed to be ladders? No. They are not ladder blocks because I cannot climb with them. But that one is building. You saw it too, didn't you? Until something happened and it shut off. Where did I shut off? No. Hmm. So, whatever these things are, they're meant to be given constant pulses. And then they do things. So, if I'm on the bottom... Oh, that's where I stole these from. Okay, let's go to one that's still intact. Like, right here. Okay, what happens when I hit this? What's it do? It seems to build a very specific pattern, doesn't it? Oh! Apparently we are playing Snake. There it goes. I don't know what these blocks are for, but they do things. Things I don't know what those things are yet. How very curious. Now, if I wanted to, I could grab more of these dangerous, dangerous, dangerous blocks, but I'd rather let their secrets stay here if possible. Does it have to do with where they're getting the signal from? Because this one would inevitably... Oh! Oh, hey, wait now. Like, if I'm up above, and I hit one, like, what happens if I hit one and it touches another one? No. No, that can't be right. Hmm. I really don't see how you would be able to actually climb to the top of the tower from here. But uh, apparently these tower builders do things. I was, I was hoping that maybe I'd find a tower block that built... Oh my gosh, pincer beaters. Okay. Fire, fire, fire. Please work fire. No joke, those things are deadly. Anybody that's encountered them will understand what I'm talking about when I say those are probably the most dangerous mob in all of Twilight Forest, notwithstanding the bosses, you know, because the bosses, of course, are the most dangerous things. Ah, uh, because obviously most of the time you'll just be fighting them and there'll be like immense lag and there'll be no possibility of you winning. Okay, let's head down again. I think I saw something that I want to investigate besides... Yes, there was a chest. Like, right over there. Ow. Ow. Spiders! Good. See, what is the goal of this? Aha! That. That is what I'm after. I don't know what these little green things are, and I'm pretty sure they are uncategorized, too, because they're, you know, work-in-progress mobs again, but they... Even they have a spawner. Yes, that's them. They're all over the place. Let's grab it and get the heck out of here. Because, uh, I don't know what other secrets this tower holds, but I prefer to do things 
one at a time. All right, now let's fly over to where I've left my portal. Ah, in safety. I really like how these things may be work in progress, but they are really good excuses for having weird, weird experiments. And uh, even more mob traps for things that I'd never really find otherwise. All right, so there's the two kind of blaze spawners. They don't count as blazes until you kill them. Very strange. Uh, let's let this thing stop glitching out on me. Because, of course, flying around holding a block really makes it make you stutter while you fly in the air. And I don't know what these spiders are, but uh, maybe we'll have a purpose for them yet. Ah, uh, oh well. <laughs> Onwards and upwards, friends. Let's see what happens next with Whip. Man, having this uranium dust in your matter fabricator while you're gone and just letting your power continue is great. Now, funny enough, I'm pretty sure it's Knight who keeps doing this, but it does tell me when I have visitors here because they keep changing the position of all my item frames. Like, let's see here. Is, are all my maps correct? Yes. Actually, let's take this one. This is the map of my house. Uh, it should be somewhere in my inventory. Yes, here it is. Okay, and as you can see, there's a new structure being formed on the very edge. Uh, do you see it there? Yes, that is the thing we are going to finally finish today and actually show you because I haven't showed it yet. <laughs> yes. Traditionally, I l seem to make horrible mistakes when I build things, so I figured I should have it on screen. We can actually see it outside of this window right now. I, I like designing things first and then making them functional. Um, at the very least, I made it all out of dirt, and then I used my wand of, uh, of replacement, whatever you call it there. Equal trade, that one. Yes, that wand is amazing. Now, let's make sure that I can actually create it. Okay, so th the deal with the soul shards is that any level 1-1 one one can be combined with any other one to, like, make it be super-powered. So here I have a level, what is this, a tier 0 shard? Okay, and a tier 4. And if I put them together, level 5 blaze shard. Oh my goodness, that destroyed the anvil. Oh my goodness, I, I'm glad there isn't like some sort of glitch where the anvils will blow themselves to pieces. Or you lose the item you're making as soon as the anvil dies. So, what chest did I keep the spare anvils in? That is a good question, Mr. Fwip. Um, no, those are the blocks we shall not talk about. Oh, my goodness. Um, where are they? There they are. Slightly damaged or regular? Let's use a slightly damaged one. I might as well get rid of it, um, as the saying is, so that I can use the full one later. There we go. All right, awesome. So, before we go show off that weird structure, uh, I did make another farm right here. As you can see, it's a little bit bigger than the uh, Skeletal Druid Torchberry farm, which is, you know, extremely simple. I made an, an even simpler one, I believe. On the third level, I just put these spiky quartz crystals everywhere because uh, this is an Iron Golem spawner. They are three blocks high and will basically take damage until they die, and it's still in range of my little wood golem under there. So I get roses, mostly. I mean, they drop Iron Ingots as well, but for some reason, quartz crystals tend to delete, destroy the items they touch. So that's kind of unfortunate. It's not a very good spawner, but um, in the tradition of Fwip making very unconventional spawn traps, apparently, uh, we got quicksand and quartz crystals. Weird. All right, now let's head over here to what I've nicknamed the Blaze Reactor. <laughs> Until I build my own nuclear reactor, apparently I'm going to keep making fake lookalikes. So you're probably thinking, what in the world is this thing? Well, it's a big tower. Uh, on top of it are the two work in progress. I'm going to call them those because I got them from the Dark Tower blaze spawners. Uh, the spawners themselves don't count as blaze spawners, so I couldn't delete them with a shard. But the monsters they spawn are, in fact, blazes. They fall down. They kind of hang around on the top there. They can't go lower. And all I do is head up here to the subsidian pipe, and I can stab any that get really close. See what I mean? So today, we're going to do something extremely dangerous. We're going to add this soul shard to the soul cage that's underneath it all. Now, I've already set up um, the wireless redstone. This will turn it off. 
No, this turns it on because when it gets a charge, it's off. However, it's got to be off for when I put the shard in place, or I'll just end up killing myself again. And that's not very entertaining if it's on purpose. Oh, whoops. No, no, darn it. I shouldn't have used gravel as a decoration block for this structure. Alright, thankfully we do have one cobblestone in my inventory to fill up that water gap. Yeah, these blazes aren't very happy about this trap. Um, this, however, should be better than the blaze farm I left in single quests so long ago. Um... It is totally blocked off, as far as I'm aware. There we go. They are still able to attack me for now, but all I need to do... This is a blaze shard, right? Yes. Fly up. Oh, ow. Put her in the cage. There we go. And then just swim back down. I'm big enough to go through. The blazes are not exactly. There we are. Alright, so now all I need to do is add in the stone slab. I think. There. There. And now, I can't get back in, but I do stand right here, perfectly in range, to attack with the Zula Blade. Now, the deal with the Zula Blade, it is a sort of the Zephyr, of course, so it attacks automatically. It does extra damage, I think, um, to mobs that are nearby. So, if they all group together, it should kill them all fairly effectively. So, let's turn on the Tier 5 Blaze Shard and see how good this goes. Oh, wow. Okay, first of all, I need to make sure that these things are not getting out of the reactor, as it were. I mean, on the plus side, my house this time is on the edge of an ocean, so if they do escape, they should die rather than set my wooden house on fire. You'd think I'd learn. No, Flip does not learn. Flip only makes bigger mistakes. So this is spawning a fair amount of mobs, isn't it? Of course, if I head down and I use my Zula Blade, we'll notice that that a single few swipes should be able to turn this into an EXP farm as long as I'm, like, awake. There we are. Yeah. Is this actually faster than the Squatch's uh, zombie farm? Good question. Now, my blade has repair on it, so it will forever be fine. I think this is actually a bit loud. Let's, uh, let's just fix that a bit. Sound, yes. Let's put it down a bit. Blazes are possibly one of the loudest mobs in the game. On the plus side, this is an amazing blaze uh, rod farm, I guess. Now that it's spawning at least, like, 20 blazes at once, and I'm not sure if the two uh, natural occurring spawners actually count as blazes, exactly. So it may just spawn more blazes than normally would be allowed by a single tier 5 spawner. At the very least, it, it, does, it does spawn the rods... And unless I don't chop, then I don't get the AXP. That's the only thing. With Squatches, you can be AFK, and the turtle can kill everything. With mine, you need this specific sword. But they do get close enough, and since they group together, you are able to easily get to level 30 a couple of times, I think. There we go. In fact, I'm at level 30 now. Let's shut off and see how long it takes for them to all die. Hmm... I was I was really thinking about a way to make this uh, more effective, but uh, you know what? Just a giant room they can't escape from is already an improvement on most of my other designs, honestly. Considering how catastrophic failure tends to be my motif, I'm glad that it didn't happen this time. Well, uh, the thing is, all the, that obsidian pipe does is pump across some uh, facaded pipes. Let's go have a look at that underneath, just so that I can prove that it happened. Um, made with an assembly table, of course. You can see the pipes bring it up and into the generator that I never used to use at all. Because who needs a generator when you're already generating power? But just like in single quest, this will automatically shove all blaze rods into this thing. Actually, since it'll probably be pumping more, I should probably just put 32 in there. They don't burn that fast, I guess, but if you want, like, an infinite power source, uh, it works. Yeah. Every so often, a blaze will spawn on top of the spawner and not die. That's why there's still a blaze on the map. But uh, I don't mind about that. I mean, what's the big deal? I'm not even sure what else I can use these blaze rods for, besides a source of fuel. But uh, at the very least, it's a very cool-looking reactor-type structure on my map again. Uh, let's enchant something while I'm here, actually. That would be a very good idea. What am I hoping for? Thorns, or protection. I still need to give a protection aspect to my helmet, because I've decided. 
I've decided I'm not going to make the ultimate solar panel helmet. The thing is, guys, the ultimate solar really gives me a lot of power. I really like that. And this regular helmet, if I upgraded it, it would not actually give me the respiration effect. Oh, yes, that's wonderful. Anyway, my helmet is what protects me from poison and wither and burning and breathing even. I'm serious. And, and if I have tin cans with food in my inventory, it'll automatically feed me them while I'm running around. All those abilities, if I add the ultimate solar helmet, would actually be lost, according to the wiki site. I mean, I don't know if I'm willing to test it. Uh, has anyone else tested that yet? Uh, I don't know. But I have to say, not being poisoned is a lot more important to me than uh, having an infinitely recharging jetpack. Of course, that means I'm going to have to think of an alternative way to really pump up the juice on my Graviton suit, because I am honestly feeling the drain every now and then. If I fly around and leave it on, it'll soon go down to half power, and that's not very good. This thing drains faster than my jetpack ever did, but uh, it certainly is effective for flying around. It's just, if you use it, wow, you really feel the drain. So what's a good way to stop that? I don't know. I might have to build, like, a charger mat, which is extremely expensive. Or perhaps we're going to have to look into, like, one of Knight's designs. He's got a blue electric battery charger that he built in one of his recent crypto episodes that I might have to examine because maybe I can build a similar design but for EU-powered products. Hmm. Now, the only way to get Protection 4 on a book, I believe, is if you can combine two Protection 3s. So I don't feel too bad right now about mixing it up. Let's actually go see if I can if I can maybe luckily get... Uh... Now, let's just get to a level when I can equip the book. This is a very, very good spawner. See, the thing is, I just wanted my own EXP farm. I mean, it's nice and all to have to fly over to Squatch's place every now and again just to get... Zombie flesh, but the really cool thing about... Ooh, okay, maybe it, they can hit me every so often, but I'm so super-powered, this is like a dangerous spawner for the... Not for the faint of heart. Still need to have food, though, and I think I ran out of food. That's fine, though, because on the way to my spawner, I can drop off here at the tree farm and just pick up a stack of apples. Because, dear goodness, does this make apples. I mean, over time, but I mean, I don't need the wood anymore, funny enough. Although I could use the wood for something. Build myself an airship, perhaps. Something like that. But the thing is, with Lasquatch's zombie farm, all the rotten flesh that you get as a result is just... You have to throw it on the ground, it might cause lag, and it almost kills this turtle if it fills up too much. It can't still hit me. I wonder if I could put, like... No, no, no. If I put, like, uh, an iron bar in here, maybe I couldn't attack them as effectively. I mean, there's only some of them that can attack me in the first place. The thing is, all these blaze rods, I don't need them, so I can just chuck them in here and they'll automatically get sent to the generator to power a little bit of EU. So it's kind of like it works. It, it kind of does. I mean, I could build an offshoot and just pump it all into the recycler, but that's even, even more of a waste. I think because the generator is going to fill up so fast, maybe one thing I could do is just add extra generators to the side of my house, specifically for this blaze rod process. Look at this. This ain't that bad, is it? Since my sword will never die, this is a fairly effective trap, I think. What do you think? Leave your comments in the comments section instead of all over your faces, because I like to hear what you guys think, and if you're watching this video, you should have an opinion. Where are your opinions, everybody? Thinking is life. If you're not thinking, you're dead, okay? Ah, uh, that's my opinion, but still, it's a pretty good one, I think. I know what it's like not thinking. Oh, it's terrible. Absolutely terrible. Creativity is, is what keeps people going. If you're not creative, I don't know what you are, but life is going to be a sad place for you. Oh, man, I am getting off track. Anyway, this is a blaze farm. <laughs> Boy, does it chop. This blade slices and dices. This is more like, uh, well, it's a very weird EXP farm, I suppose, but... Uh, I'm a very weird player, aren't I? There we go. That should be enough power to actually levels, I mean. Let's turn it off. Should be enough levels to both maybe get another protection book and uh, enchant my helmet again. Because this helmet, man, 
This helmet, whew, it's already got two enchantments on it, and the more you have, the more expensive it gets. So let's just grab ourselves a book. Wow, I've already got like two and a half stacks of these these rods. And how's the generator doing? Is it overflowing yet? I'm not sure how fast they cook. Oh, that's the extractor. Uh, yes, at it, it 10 every so often. Okay, well the thing is, I also upgraded all my machines to higher tiered ones because I could. Rotary Macerator, Singularity Compressor, etc. And with all the extra abilities, I just pumped them into my Electric Furnace and Regular Macerator. Because guess what, guys? The Electric Furnace is one of my favorite inventions. Er, blocks, I guess. In IC2. Because I hate coal now. I do not cook with coal. I don't need it. Aquafinity, that's... That's... That's not worth bringing upstairs. You can stay here. Oh, that's sad. But, hey, sometimes it's a hit and a miss with these enchantment books, and I'm totally willing to go through four frugal three books before I hit something useful. Speaking of useful, let's grab my helmet, which hasn't gotten protection on it yet. Please say I only need ten levels. I was hoping this would wear out twelve. Oh, you really? But it would, it would. Yeah, it would. Okay. Two levels. <laughs> I should really off-screen this because it's probably boring as hail. But, uh, you know what? Too bad. Like I said, I've been off-screening too much stuff. I off-screened the entire building of that reactor. Um, and if you're wondering what it looks like from underneath, there go the rods. There are no gold pipes involved. They take a long time. But that's intentional. Because I hope that by the time the rods go through the pipe, they will have burned away at the generator. So therefore, it will keep itself stocked without actually... Um, overflowing, because that's kind of important to me. I don't like having items all over my floor. I'm, uh, I'm not exactly, like, a clean freak. No, far from it. See my room in real life for proof of that. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just like being tidy. Look at that, I'm already at level 17, and I've only done, like, five swipes of the sword. And that is why this is a pretty good e EXP farm. Slash blaze rod maker. And they don't escape. Oh, cannot stress that enough. They do not escape. That's probably my best design so far of a blaze thingy. I mean, it, it's an EXP farm, technically. It's also, you know, a generator. So that's good. It's very good, in fact. Uh, let's... What was I doing? Yes. <laughs> Enchanting the helmet. Great. Hey, by the way, guys. I found out that if you name your items first, it will cost less EXP in the long run, of course. I mean, it might be obvious to you or me, but I didn't think of that until, like, the other day. Because the more levels you have, the more expensive it is to get them. Like, you know, going up to level 5 is a lot easier than going up to level 15. So if you enchant, if you rename your items first, it'll only take that base cost, and it'll only probably cost 6 levels to do so. However, like, if, if you wait until you've already got Protection 3 and these things here, it'll probably cost you like 26 levels just to rename it. Which is a bit ridiculous. I think, uh... I think that's the level system in Minecraft working against itself. Because a name change, sure, it costs levels. But I don't think it should be relative to the the number of enchantments on an item. I mean, maybe tacked onto the end, yes, but that's just inefficient use of, uh... Of enchanting. And you'll notice, if I'm here by my reactor... Those other two natural blaze shards at the top, well, kind of natural, will still spawn blazes. So, uh, yeah, you don't actually need the tier 5 one exactly, but that just makes it be a heck of a lot more deadlier. Other things I've been working on is I haven't reached the leaden bee yet. That's what my mutation alviary here is trying to accomplish. Apparently, I just keep getting offshoots because when you mix a diligent princess with a resilient drone... There's many possibilities, and here we have three of them, again. Not very useful, is it? So let's just grab them all out of this alviary. But I've, I've basically hit every offshoot there is, except leaden bees. So sad. I don't know what the problem is. I think maybe there's just a percentage chance of getting each of them. Actually, look at this. Rusty, tarnished, corroded... Last time I did this, I got bauxite and um, and corroded as well. So it's probably totally random. And I'm not sure how to fix things to make it any less or more 
perfect. Okay, so what we need is the Diligent Species Serum, which I think I left uh, in here somewhere. Resilient is one of them, yes. Okay. Fine. Fine, Danny. Make me look stupid. And this one on the side? Yes, there it is. Alright, all I need to do is re-inoculate these bees with the Species Serums. Diligent Queen. No, Diligent Princess. Resilient Drone. And then, what I want to do is re which one is it going to be rusty corroded it doesn't matter they're they're pretty much all exactly the same thing is i'm going to inject them with maximum fertility serum to give me a good chance of getting those other ones cuz by this point i just want to have all the bees and if you're wondering why confusion effect was in there it turns out that the ecstatic bee really really likes lightning it burned down its own al alveary topping not the alveary blocks but the wooden slabs on top thankfully Thankfully, these blocks here are not flam flammable. And this thing still doesn't work. Why not? Because it's very difficult to get a bee accustomed to an environment that it's not accustomed to. See, the humidity keeps going away. Now, the easiest way to get a bee accustomed to something it's not accustomed to, usually, is inject both the drone and the princess before they become a queen. Then you won't have problems I've been trying to just inject the queen for the last while, and obviously it's not working. So let's just pick an apiary in which I haven't got anything in it yet. Uh, I like this one on the side here. Yep, there we go. And we'll just shove the refined queen in there. It'll explode into a drone and a princess, and we can re-inject it. That is the best way, I believe, of doing this. Now let's just chuck all these drones either into my uh, indexer or back in the gene pool, because I don't need them. But in fact, I don't really need everything in the gene pool anyway. I mean, who needs more than a 5x5 five five tank? Oh well. Go ahead, little bees. Get ground up. And that's my charm of keeping three just in case, because if I die again... Oh my goodness, guys, I would blow my top. Thankfully, I, I haven't tested out if the charm of keeping three actually keeps all your items, but we're gonna hopefully not find that out in the near future. So anyway, that has been the the Blaze Reactor, uh, my bee processes, because hey, 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 let's go have a look at that, uh, that Apiris database for a quick moment, because on one of these pages, it actually tells you your progress. So I am a professional beekeeper, apparently, with 42 out of 50 branches and 119 species. If I tried to go through, you'd also notice it doesn't actually mention things like the uh, Thomecraft bees when it takes into account your level, so I'm actually higher than you'd think. Hmm. Very, very nice, isn't it? I enjoy it. I think I might actually want to go back to using the Solum Bees, though, because uh, for products, they actually do generate amber every nine minutes, and amber is something that I keep using. I, I like the look of it when it comes to those weird, weird spawner traps, and I used all of my amber in just building those blocks. Oh, oh, that's not good. Apparently it's still dark out here. Go on, shoo. Oh, now we can finally see how the old iron golem one works. It only works at night, but uh, you know what? I don't mind. Very soon, or not soon at all, these guys should die. Drop their items, and we'll see my little wooden golem. Go and get them, and he's wearing glasses to make sure they die. There it is. See the iron down there? There he goes, and collected. Perfect. Let's actually head down there to see, because I've... Well, today is spawner day, apparently. You've seen my blaze reactor in grand detail. And why don't we go have a look at the iron golem one, which is horribly inefficient. Nobody should use it. <laughs> but uh, it exists. There's all the dying skeletal druids. And here's all the fancy quartz crystals doing their thing, looking pretty. Uh, I've got 51 iron from this, but I'm going to end 16 roses. So the work in progress golems, for now at least, act exactly like the regular golems. And the work in progress blazes work exactly like that as well. Cool. That's dandy. So what will I be building next? Well, I don't know. I didn't exactly plan to build a blaze reactor, but uh, we've got one. Hurrah for that. No telling what FWIP is going to build next on this server, and it should be interesting. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope this was entertaining. This is FWIP, Mr.
crazy dude, signing out with his jetpack still on. See you later!